I'm working full-time on my job and part-time on my fortune because profits lead to fortune. I got so excited about that philosophy. I'm working full-time on my job, but now I'm working part-time on my fortune. I found a way not only to make a living, you won't pay the rent, which is okay, but a chance to go to work to make a fortune? And I said, right now I'm working part-time on my fortune and full-time on my job, but it won't be long until I'll be working full-time on my fortune. Can you imagine what life is going to be like? Now, here was my first goal when I started, and that was part-time, I wanted to equal on my profits part-time what I was earning on my full-time job. This is called the magic of part-time. It is so thrilling for people to start working the business part-time because now you can work on profits and it doesn't take very long. If you'll really concentrate on those 10, 12, 15 hours a week, it won't be long if you really do it right and learn some of the skills I'm going to talk about. It won't be long until you can be earning as much part-time working on your fortune as you are full-time working on your job. I did that in less than six months. Now I've got an incredible invitation. I found a way part-time to work on my fortune and I'm making as much money at that as I am on my full-time job. Would you like to hear my story? It was incredible. Now here was my second goal, to make twice as much money part-time working on my fortune as I was working full-time on my job. And I reached that in less than a year making twice as much money part-time working on my fortune as I was full-time working on my job. Now I've got an incredible invitation that won't quit. I found a way through a unique opportunity to work part-time on my fortune and I'm now earning twice as much money as I am working full-time on my job. Would you like to hear my story? Do you imagine anybody would say, no, I don't care to hear your story? No. Everybody I said that to said, wow, yes, what are you doing? I said, I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you. Now, when I started making twice as much money part-time as full-time, here's, here's my dilemma. I didn't want to go full-time. And why not go full-time? And the reason was because I didn't want to give up my electrifying story. <laughs> right? It was so powerful, nobody could resist the invitation to at least take a look. I didn't want to give it up. And I hung on for I don't know how long until it was, you know, almost insane. And then finally, finally, reluctantly, I gave up my full-time job. Here's the next one philosophy that helped change my life. It's not what happens that determines your life future. It's not what happens that determines your life future. It's what you do about what happens. All of us are in like a little sailboat. And it's not the blowing of the wind that determines your destination. It's the set of the sail. So jot this phrase down. It's one of the best to understand. Kids need to understand it. The same wind blows on us all. The same wind blows on us all. The wind of disaster, the wind of opportunity, the wind of change, the wind when it's upside down, the wind when it's favorable and unfavorable. The same wind blows on us all. The economic wind, the social wind, the political wind, the same wind blows on everybody. The difference in where you arrive in one year, three years, five years, the difference in arrival is not the blowing of the wind, but the set of the same. And that's what learning is all about, to set a better sail this year than last year. To set a better sail. The first six years of my economic life, I wound up broke. Second six years, I wound up rich. You say, well, the Democrats must have finally gotten power. No, no, no. It was not a political change. Here's what changed the second six years of my economic life. It was my philosophy that changed. The set of the sail of better thinking, correcting the errors of the past and picking up new disciplines for the future. That's all I had to do at the end of the first six. Correct the errors of the past and then pick up some new disciplines for the future. And my total life changed. The second six years was totally different than the first six of my working life. And guess who can do that? 
anybody. Now you can keep on the same path for the next couple of years as you have the past two. But if you wish to, if you wish to, and maybe everything's okay for you and you don't need to, but if you need to make some changes, I'm telling you, you can start doing it today so that the next two years will be drastically different than the last two. And anybody who wishes to do that can. And you can do it between ages 40 and 43. You can do it between ages 13 and 50. You can do it between ages 60 and 62. Any two years, any five years that you wish to drastically change from the previous five, you can do it. If you wish to. Now, this, is not, this, is, this isn't written. This is not a law. Here's what it's called, opportunity. But if you don't know you can change, if you don't know you can drastically change your income, change your future, change your health, change your marriage, change everything. If you don't know that, some people then go year after year after year after year not making much change simply because they, they didn't get to the class. They never read the book. They never went to the seminar. They never made the discovery. They didn't seek for the knowledge of how could I make my life better. And if you just rock along, I'm telling you it's okay. Anybody can live any way they choose, but I'm here to tell all of you that if you wish to, it's possible to make the next three years totally different than the last three. And all you have to do is just a few things. So if you got that one now, it's not the blowing of the wind that determines your income. It's not the blowing of the wind that determines your fortune. It's the set of the same. And that's why we gathered here today. Maybe I've got some ideas that'll help you with a couple of little things about setting the sail of your thinking that might drastically give you multiplied more benefit the next three years than you've gotten in the last three. So it's not what happens. What happens happens to everybody. Chevron years ago brought me in to talk to management. They said, Mr. Owen, you travel around the world and you're fairly knowledgeable. What do you think the next 10 years are gonna be like? I said, gentlemen, I can tell you, I do know the right people. So they all leaned forward and listened carefully. And I said, gentlemen, the next 10 years are going to be about like the last 10. <laughs> the next season after fall is, well, I promise you that's not going to change. After day comes, night, I promise you that's not going to change. Here's how the last 6,000 years reads. If you want to make a note of Jim Rohn's vision of history, the last 6,000 years, here's how it reads. Opportunity mixed with difficulty. And if we're around another 6,000 years, it's going to read like that looks like for the next 6,000 years. Opportunity mixed with difficulty. Now, sometimes there seems to be more opportunity than difficulty. And then sometimes there seems to be more difficulty than opportunity, but the mix isn't going to change. After expansion comes recession. But after recession comes expansion. Not to think so, see, is naive. And once you've got just a little of this stuff settled, then you know exactly what to do. You know exactly what to anticipate so you can be ready. Now, here's the next one, and I heard it in my invitation. Here's what it says. For things to change, you have to change. I was hoping the government would change and taxes would change and economics would change and my boss would change and be more generous. I wished for everything to change and my teacher said, no, Mr. Owen, for things to change for you, you have to change. Don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Once I understood this, this altered the course of my life. Don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. And here's the big one. Don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills. You don't need less problems. You simply need more skills. Don't wish for less challenge. Wish for more wisdom. Accept the challenge because you can't grow without a challenge. You can't get rich without a challenge. You can't fly without gravity. You have to understand the challenge. But that's the key is to now develop wisdom to overcome the challenge. Don't wish for less challenge but more wisdom. And then here's one more philosophy to help change my life forever. You can do the most remarkable things no matter what happens. Humans can do the most remarkable things no matter what happens. Philosophies that change my life. Here's one of the big philosophies I learned in network marketing. It's called the law of averages. If you do something often enough, baseball we call it batting average. 
If you talk to 10 people, one says yes. Now the ratio has begun. One out of 10. Talk to 10, get one. Here's something interesting about the law of averages. Once it starts, it tends to continue. This is colossal information. Once a ratio starts, it tends to continue. If you talk to 10 and get one, sure enough, chances are excellent. If you talk to 10 more, you'll get another one. Talk to 10 more, you'll get another one. Now you can compete. If you can only get one out of 10, you can compete, even with somebody that can get nine out of 10. If you've been here a long time, you can get nine out of 10. I just joined, I can only get one out of 10. If we have a 30-day contest, I will beat you. Say, well, how could you beat me? Here's why. During that 30 days, you talk to 10 and get nine. I talk to 100 and get 10. I beat you. <laughs> Isn't that clever? This is clever stuff. And I do it for two reasons. I sincerely wish to win. But I do it for another very sincere reason. I wish for you to lose. <laughs> and that's noble on my part. Here's why it's noble. You learn more by losing than you do by winning. So I wish to give you that experience. Now here's how I do it once I understand uh, the law of averages. When I'm new, I make up in numbers what I lack in skill. I make up in numbers what I lack in skill. Now who can do that? Anybody that's ambitious. Anybody with a little ingenuity. Anybody, doesn't matter. Now here's one more. The law of averages can be increased. You get one out of 10, talk to 10, get another one. Talk to 10, get another one. The fourth time you talk to 10, you get two. Why would the fourth time you talk to 10, you get two instead of one? You're getting better, you're getting better. And who can get better? Anybody. Talk to 10, get two, talk to 10, get two. Finally, talk to 10, get three. I finally got up to about three. Now, it takes more than a genius to go past like three or four. But three will do. If you bat 300 in baseball, they pay you $4 million a year, which means you're out seven times out of 10. Seven times out of 10, out. Make $4 million a year. Are you ready for that? So this works so well now in your business. Just jot the phrase down. You don't have to bat a thousand. You don't have to bat a thousand to make big money. One out of 10 is fine. Two out of 10 is terrific. Three out of 10 is fabulous. Some particular incredible genius might get four out of 10, but three out of 10 is sufficient to make you rich beyond your wildest imagination. This is how I went after my friends, neighbors, and relatives when I first started recruiting. I said, look, I've got a new business and I'm getting about three out of 10 to join. And I don't mind you, just come to the meeting and be one of the seven. <laughs> right? Doesn't matter. Right? You're my friend, you'll do me a favor. And so it's not important to me that you like it. It's not important to me that you join. It's certainly not important to me that you buy. It's just important to me that you listen. One of the reasons though I want you to hear the story is because a year from now, if I'm doing well, I don't want you to say, how come you never picked up the phone a year ago? I never got a letter, never got a call. You call me a friend? You're making all this money? You never picked up the phone. So I don't want that to happen. So for two reasons, I want you to see what I'm doing. So that a year from now, if I'm doing well, I can say, you know, I gave you the opportunity. But also, just as a favor, come and be one of the seven. It doesn't matter to me if you buy or join. But I need 10 to get three. And if you're one of the three, wonderful. If you're not, wonderful. It doesn't, it might matter to you. It might matter to you, but it doesn't matter to me. Now, it matters to me because we're friends, but it doesn't matter in terms of my average. Now, here's the second law that changed my life forever in network marketing. I learned the law of sowing and reaping. And in the law of sowing and reaping is also the story of the law of averages. Jot this down. The story of the sower comes from the Bible. I'm an amateur on the Bible, but this is such a useful story. Here's what the story says. 
and take the notes because the drama's in the details. The sower was ambitious. Evidently, he was ambitious. When you read the whole story, you'll conclude, yes, this was an ambitious sower. Here was number two. He had excellent seed. The sower who sowed the seed had excellent seed. And the excellent seed could be an excellent opportunity, an excellent product, an excellent story. So we've got an ambitious sower with excellent seed. But now here's the rest of the details of the story for your information, for the drama of your life, so you can understand things better. Learning some of this is how I got rich by age 31. Okay. Number one, it says the sower goes out to sow the seed, but the first part of the seed falls by the wayside and the birds get it. So jot this down. The birds are going to get some of the seed. The birds are going to get some of the seed. Now you say, well, Mr. Rome, what does that mean? Well, I invite John to come to a meeting. He said he'd be there Tuesday night. Tuesday night I show up, John isn't there. I say, John, I wonder why John didn't make it. Now I know the answer. The birds. The birds. John had this great idea of coming to the meeting to look at an opportunity, and somebody stole it and said, you're not going to go see Network Mark. And he says, well, maybe not. So have you jotted that down now? The birds are going to get some. Now, when the birds get some, you've got two options. Number one is to chase birds. <laughs> and say, well, let me get a hold of the person that talked him out of coming to the meeting. I'll tear him a new page. But I wouldn't do this. Here's what happens if you go chasing birds. You leave the field. If you go to the story, it says, the sower kept on sowing. See, that was the secret to his success. He kept on sowing. And if you keep sowing, you can sow more than the birds can get because there aren't enough birds. If you keep sowing, there are some birds, but there's not enough because the law of averages will work for you. My mentor taught me, he said, you know, Mr. Owen, there's only nine or 10 real nasty, miserable people in the whole world. Now he says they move around a lot, you know, and you're liable to... <laughs> You'll bump into one once in a while. But when you bump into one, you say, there's only nine more like you. I can handle that in the whole world. Okay. Now, here's what else it says. The sower now keeps sowing the seed. Now the seed falls, the story says, on rocky ground where the soil is shallow. And the rocky ground where the soil is shallow is not of your making. Because you had excellent seed and you were an ambitious sower. So the rocky ground where the soil is shallow is not of your making. But here's what it says what happened. This time, the little seed that falls in the ground starts to grow, and the little plant starts to grow. But the first hot day, it withers and dies. It dies. Not an easy thing to watch. I finally get John started. Sure enough, three or four days later, somebody says, boo, and he goes, is gonna get some. And this is not of your making. Here's what you must say when that happens. Isn't that interesting? Wow. What can you do? The answer is nothing. You say, well, I'm gonna to try to change this. I wouldn't take that class. You know, the sun comes up in the east, somebody says, why is that? I wouldn't spend much time on that. <laughs> Just let that happen. Don't go for this why, why, why stuff. I'm giving you the answers here. The answers is in the structure and the consequences and in the deal. The answer is in the deal. Anything beyond that is not worth study. You say, well, how come some just last a little while? I wouldn't sign up for that class. Here's the answer. Some don't stay. You just, you just have to jot that down. And when some leaves, you say, that's one of those that don't stay. You just, you, now you know what category to put them in. And you can't solve this now. You can't, it's like rearranging the seasons. You can't fool with that. All you can do is cooperate with the way things are set up. I didn't set it up. You say, well, it shouldn't be this way. Well, when you get your own planet, you can rearrange this whole deal. <laughs> but on this planet, you're a guest. You've got to take it as it comes. Now, here was the secret to the ambitious sower with good seed. It said he kept on sowing. Now, here's what he had to do to keep on sowing. He had to discipline his disappointment. 
This is a key phrase now to use the rest of your life. You must learn to discipline your disappointment because you didn't set up the setup and some are not going to stay and that is not of your making. Now, if you made gross errors and you ran them off, see, that'd be different. Now, you're responsible for that. But if it's in the normal course of things, this is the way things are. Now, here's what it says. The sower keeps on sowing. Now, it says the seed falls on thorny ground. And somebody says, well, how much of this do you have to go through? Well, hang on. It's, it's not the end of the story now. Now, the little seed falls on thorny ground. And now, the little plant starts to grow again. But as the little plant starts to grow, the thorns choke it to death. And it dies. The story even called these little thorns, little cares, little distractions, little somethings. Who knows what all they are? I say, John, we had a meeting last night. You weren't here. John says, well, I can't make every meeting. I say, why not? You're part time. He said, well, the screen door came off the hinges and you just can't let your house fall apart. You got to take some time and fix things up. And I can hear the thorn going. He says some extra trash had piled up in the garage. You can't let mountains of trash take over. You got to keep your trash hauled out. <laughs> People who let little things cheat them out of big opportunities. People who let little things cheat them out of big opportunities. And you feel almost helpless. What could I do about that? And that's nothing. And you say, well, why is this? I'm asking you not to sign up for that class. Don't sign up for these why is this class. But now here's the good news. Let's read the rest of the story now quickly. The sower now what? Keeps on sowing the seed. Keeps on sharing the story. Keeps on giving an invitation. Yes, the invitation can be more powerful for me as it was one year later than it was the first, the first month. Because now I'm saying I'm making twice as much money part-time as I'm making on my full-time job. Yes, the story can be more powerful, but the law of average is still gonna work. But now here's what the story said. Finally, the seed falls on good ground. Finally, the seed falls on good ground. Now put this in parenthesis. It always will. If you keep sowing. If you share a good idea long enough, it will fall on good people. The good ground did 100%. You say, well, why the difference in numbers? I wouldn't sign up for that class. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Have I said that often enough now? <laughs> Don't register for that class. It's just the way it is. Now I tried to get the 30s to do 60. Found out it was more than I could handle. I used to say, I'll make them successful if it kills me. I almost died. <laughs> no, you can't do that. Here's what you do. Let the 30s do 30 to the best of their ability and keep doing 30 because that's how they build their lifestyle and get what they want out of life. And